Thank you very much for the invitation from the ACT SCAR Modelling Society Committee to give a short presentation on, on some Royal Australian Air Force vehicles that were used during the Second World War. All the images in my presentation are from the collection of the Australian War Memorial. Um, they're all searchable uh, online on the website www.awm.gov.au. Uh, many members of ACT SMS are very familiar with the website and of course with like the actual um, our building and our collection of facilities. Um, I'm a curator um, at the memorial and I'm involved with um, technology and objects such as aircraft and vehicles and uniforms and so, and so on. This, this presentation should go for about 30 minutes. There's about 30 slides. Uh, each slide, um, I've got a little bit of a caption off the actual website um, and it's mainly of the time. So um, there may be some little, some little like incorrect um, parts of it. Um, at the end of it, um, or actually during it, if you, if you ask questions, please do. Um, but uh, I will make time at the end for any questions. And um, I'll also just talk a little bit as well about like um, well, what we can see in the images. Um, and I try to use high resolution images where possible um, so that you can get the most out of it um, for families, for us, for us modelers, for researchers, for curators and so forth. This first image here is of an 80 squadron Royal Australian Air Force um, Jeep in the, in the Dutch East Indies in March 1945. And you can see um, it's got first tactical air force uh, and RAAF superimposed underneath it. Um, and of course, um, and that's on the uh, on like the lower windscreen. And uh, what appears to be on the sides of the hood, um, I imagine both sides, uh, has RAAF and the serial number for the vehicle. But uh, this, of course, you can get kits, of course, for Jeeps in many scales. Um, but it'd be good to see this sort of stuff maybe done by some decal manufacturers here in Australia or overseas. Uh, this presentation I've just called Wheels of the RAAF during the Second World War for the ACT Sky Modelling Society on the 10th of September, 2021. Uh, all the images, as I said before, are from the War Memorial Collection, and my name is Garth. Uh, as a very quick introduction, this is not a thorough study. It's a selection of images from your War Memorial Collection. It's a highly illustrated presentation with a range of topics discussed, such as vehicle types, such as which also includes captured enemy vehicles, and uh, camouflage and markings, including some ground-based nose art. Uh, this image here is from Italy in 1943, and you can see two members of 450 Squadron uh, basically applying paint and uh, to the side of one of the vehicles. It looks to be black uh, paint, hand, hand applied just the side of the vehicle over what appears to be a sand or tan sort of base. And um, so, yeah, so the, and like the caption, of course, is as written during the war, so it's often by a media person. But um, yeah, so this is my first example here of, uh, of an RAAF um, marked vehicle uh, in like uh, North Africa and also Italy during the war. You'll notice as well, um, often you'll see RAAF um, painted on the side doors of the multitude of vehicles used by the Air Force during the war. Um, these images are to us to be uh, to help inspire you and other people for any like uh, any modelling subjects um, and also to learn a bit about our about our air force because this year is the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Royal Australian Air Force and this presentation is a little tribute for me um, about that as well. Um, these vehicles are used in a range of roles: um, transport, liaison, crash recovery. Ambulance maintenance, airfield construction. That's a very important thing which the Air Force was famous for in World War II, especially in the Pacific. Um, it was used um, as well in entertainment units, um, wireless uh, communications, cargo, and and like the list goes on. Uh, here you have an example of a David Brown tractor uh, being used by 463 Squadron RAAF at RAF Station Waddington in the UK. Uh, we'll be using these image, this, this image and, and the following images to help us repaint the David Brown, which was under George for the last 20 or so years. 
Uh, it was painted in an overall blue scheme, and we're going to take it to a, a camouflaged finish. And these images here, we'll, we're, we're actually using as reference images. If you can have a close look at the image, at this photo, have a look at the, at the sign on the back wall. Do not urinate near the hut, is what it says. So yeah, uh, and this is part of a series of images. This is a side view of that very same David Brown tractor. Uh, it's the same people hanging out with, uh, with two WAFs as well. And uh, the pilot of the Lancaster who they were assigned to was pilot for George Flanagan, DFC. You'll see along the, um, the edge here of the rear tire, the scalloping of like the Mickey Mouse ears from like the two part camouflage, the dark green and medium green paint in my layman's terms. Another uh, RAF vehicle used by Royal Australian Air Force crewmen. Um, and this is a personnel truck used by the same squadron, 463, um, driven by women's auxiliary Air Force member uh, in the front. This is, the, um, this is very special for Australia because uh, we lost uh, about 41% of our 10,000 Australians who flew in Bomber Command during the war. And the vast majority of those men, the last vehicle that they were in was one of these vehicles before they, went, they like, took their last flight. Um, so uh, this is a very, very, uh, very, very important vehicle type, I think. And you notice that like it's a very high number of women who were involved as well on and around the stations in a multitude of roles. Um, we intend to have a female WAF uh, member a mannequin on the David Brown tractor if things go to plan. Now to the Pacific War, um, you've got Tarakan Island, uh, 20th of June, 1945. Um, You've got a Kitty Hawk here being, being, being recovered, and you'll see a RAAF uh, breakdown lorry of, of number 11 repair and salvage unit um, helping out there. At the end of all the captions, you'll see a number or a combination of numbers and letters. That is the War Memorial collection image number if you, if you want to look it up yourself. This vehicle, this one's cool. Uh, you've got at, uh, you've got You've got two vehicles plus a bike at El Daba in Egypt in December 1943. 451 Squadron, Royal Australian Air Force, you flew Spitfires. And you'll notice on the doors of the two vehicles in the background, one's an American-made truck and one's a British truck in the background, they've both got RAAF um, on the doors in white. So one's a fuel tender and one looks like a general transport CCKW353 vehicle. And you've got a motorcycle here in front of you being worked on. This image is part of a series of images uh, depicting these guys hanging around their bike, having a tinker with it. This one here is from the Pacific War. Uh, in, this, in this case, the Northwest area, which is of course covering Darwin, the Northern Territory. You've got Strauss, Northern Territory on the 20th of January, 1943. 76 Squadron Kitty Hawk pilots um, congregate in the rear of one of their three tonne trucks um, and you've got written on the side, just as a joke, it's awesome. Squadron cattle truck, tropo pilots only, danger. I thought I'd chuck that one in. Um, just looking at the finish of the vehicle, it looks to be an overall um, maybe dark green uh, finish. And you can see the FOR of Ford on the right side of the vehicle there. Um, so, yeah, this is an Australian um, base. And, of course, Strauss was, was also used just prior to these guys getting there by the US 49th Fighter Group. With their, with their P-40 Kitty Hawks. This is another Australian-based um, image. This is Point Cook during the war. Two members of the WAF on a tractor. Eileen Patterson is standing and, Mer and Merwin Twine and Davis is sitting behind the wheel. Miss Davis studied as a landscape architect after the Second World War and was awarded the MBE in 1980, it turns out. Uh, this tractor here, um, I'm not exactly sure of the uh, type, but it's not a David Brown as far as I can see. But the vehicle in the background's got uh, a really interesting camouflage pattern of a couple of colours there. Um, and this tractor, I'm not sure if it's got one or two um, colours involved, but yeah. So this is an important vehicle to just tow aircraft around, push them around um, when cook during the war. This one's in the Western Desert in 1943. It's a convoy of trucks of a supply and transport column moving into an airfield in, in the Western Desert. 
and uh, the unit's CO was Flight Lieutenant Willem, Royal Australian Air Force of Ormond, Victoria. And you'll see on the back there, on the back of all five trucks, they've all got a kangaroo. Looks like looks a bit maybe a black kangaroo on a white disc. Uh, and you'll also notice with the War Department um, registration on the back there, it says WD for War Department, British War Department. Next to it is Egyptian numbers, sorry, like Arabic numbers for, to be used in Egypt. You'll see a couple of um, images in this presentation were done during the war in Egypt. So they have uh, both English or uh, Western and also Arabic numbers on their um, on their like front or back of the vehicle. This is at El Dabra in Egypt as well during the war, an informal portrait of transport drivers of 451 Spitfire Squadron. I've added this one because it's um, one of a series of images we've got in the collection, which clearly show Royal Australian Air Force squadrons being proud of their unique squadron codes on their aircraft, and then them, them then applying same codes onto their vehicles. So in the case of 451, their squadron code was BQ on the Spitfires and Hurricanes, prior to that, and they painted it, it appears, on a lot of their vehicles, including motorcycles. And um, yeah, so that's why I want to show this one here. The vehicles in the background appear to be um, dark, maybe a dark green and or a tan colour. So you can see there's quite a difference in paint schemes and stuff, and, and there's a good bit of, bit of um, weathering, of course, from the dust and sand. And the vehicle in the front here appears to be like a, has got a solid wood, a solid wood tray there. So it might be um, like, a, like an accommodation sort of vehicle. This is another image of 451, but this time in southern France. Uh, about a year or so later, and it's a Spitfire here being filled up. If you look at the uh, vehicle, you'll see it says again RAAF and BQ on the driver's side door. So the squadron clearly was doing this in both Egypt and also in France later on. They also served in Corsica as well, and they, and they, and they supported Operation Dragoon, the invasion of southern France, just, just after the invasion of Normandy. This is them in Corsica. Um, two motorcycles and a truck, part of a road convoy en route from Saragia on the eastern side of the island to Caldi or St Catherine on the west coast. They're pulled up on the side of the road during a temporary halt on the journey. There's an American Army um, MP sitting there on his Harley and uh, on either side of him is a clearly marked Australian vehicles. Um, again, in the background there, you've got BQ on the door and RAAF and you've got a kangaroo over, in, over a over a boomerang there, and on the uh, side of the motorcycle's um, fuel tank, you can see as well, um, BQ as well, written on the side there. So I think that's really cool. You could probably do a bit of a diorama on that if you had the right vehicles. I know you can get the Harley Davidsons. This is a RAAF 850-gallon international KS6 4x2 tanker truck used primarily as a refueling vehicle the suction and delivery lines are coiled on the side and the rear of the tank. HU, as seen on the side door here, was number 78 Squadron Royal Australian Air Force with Squadron Code. So this one appears to be um, a 78 Squadron uh, vehicle, and it's got uh, another letter A underneath on the door as well. And of course, on the side of the um, of the uh, of the bonnet is the unique. ARN is what I'd call it on there. And I can see a little marking as well on, on the bumper as well, on the on the forward bumper. Oh, back one. Um, this one is a 6x4 General Motors Corporation model CCW 353 General Service cargo truck of 75 Squadron. And you can see the uh, GA for the Squadron, and they've even added the Squadron number, 75 as well, on the door. And uh, on the back, of course, of the... Um, on the back of the vehicle, it says RAAF, and again, the um, uh, like the vehicle's unique number, 205619. Um, this is part of a series. The photographer took two or three photos of this particular vehicle from different angles, which, of course, helps us out immeasurably uh, as models and curators because you can actually get a really good representation of this particular vehicle markings. Uh, this one's at Nome 4 Island in Dutch New Guinea in 1944. Uh, pilots of 77 Squadron, Kitty Hawk, um, being briefed. And you'll see on the um, 
on the on the uh, Jeep there, the number seventy seven, and I think it has a flight, and the uh, and the young flying officer's um hand is over the letter, the word squadron, I believe, um, on like the windscreen there. Uh, so you notice um you, there's actually quite a range of photos in the War Memorial collection, obviously post of um young pilots around a Jeep on the bonnet getting orders. Um, so like the PR photographer wants to get that photo for, for the home front. And this is a lot. This next image is um, in Italy during the war uh, in 1943, Padre Fred Mackay of Queensland, one of the RAF's uh, Padres in the Mediterranean, uh, outside his RAF truck. His driver is Corporal Les Mitten of Curry Curry, New South Wales, up near, up near Newcastle. Padre Mackay previously worked with the Australian Indo Mission and he succeeded Father Flynn in that role. So it's a very important man. And you see the side of the door here, you've got RAAF and Chaplin and a bounding, I imagine, a black kangaroo there. Uh, the vehicle's heavily weathered. You can see on the front bumper there's the ARN number, the oh, like the registration number for the vehicle, and this is a Canadian CMP truck. Um, it looks like the cab's done in one overall colour, um, but by 1943, they... Uh, the RAF could have been using European colours on their vehicles since they're in Italy at, at, at this point and not in North Africa. Uh, another CMP truck here, you'll see uh, this is at Kairun, I can't pronounce it, in Tunisia in 1943. There's a Harassers 450 Squadron Kitty Hawk with one of the unit's vehicles and it appears to be a two-tone vehicle maybe with an overspray of um, tan coloured vehicle with a bit of dark green overspray maybe. I'm not sure of the significance of the 1B um, because uh, that 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 wasn't their squadron code, but it could be some other um, marker for some reason. Um, but it's a good photo to show you the different different types of um, clothing and equipment which the pilots are wearing: uh, jeans or shorts, uh, sorry, long long pants or shorts, and of course the May West and so forth, and long sleeves and short sleeve shirts with their khaki drill uniform. This image is a bit washed out, unfortunately, but it does show uh, a wooden. Um, cab on a vehicle here in Tunisia. Members of 3 Squadron um, RAAF in front of the officer's mess beside a vehicle. It says number M23, code CV, and CV was 3 Squadron's code, aircraft code. They also, uh, they were very proud of that, of that very famous CV, and they, you'd often see on, the, on like the collection uh, for the memorial, captured Italian aircraft with CV as well, put on the side of the fuselages of the aircraft. This one here is in November 1941, it's a, and it's a bare-chested sergeant here, um, Keith Taylor um, of the RAAF, and his truck called Joan, before both fell into the hands of Rommel and his men. I have not looked up Flight Sergeant Keith Taylor as to what happened, but um, this is the original caption at the memorial. So it appears he's been um, he's made a prisoner of war. And you'll see above, uh, in line, on the roof of the truck, RAAF, and on the... Um, Bottom right is, again, the Arabic numbers next to the Western numbers. This one here is uh, at El Alamein in Egypt during July 1942, a group portrait of members of 450 Squadron Royal Australian Air Force. They are standing and sitting in a German half-track vehicle used to tow the feared 88 millimeter anti-aircraft gun, guns and other large anti-tank weapons. I don't know if she's a runner, but they're getting a good photo with it. Um, looking pretty cool, and it's the sort of thing I wish I'd boxed up and sent sent here, but uh, I didn't make it here, obviously. I know that some little half tracks did make it to Australia during the war, but they were eventually put in a landfill down in Melbourne um, at Fisherman's Bend after the war. Uh, this is a part of a series of photos of a captured German Kugelwagen um, being used by members of three squadrons by their armament section. And this is in Tunisia again, uh, the week before Anzac Day, 1943. And they're working on a on a 50 cal machine gun there, I can see. And it looks like um, on the front left tyre there, there's, uh, I think it's a sporterized rifle. It looks weird, but it's got a, I think it's an Italian rifle, actually, with a straight bolt. Maybe Aaron Kirkle could fix me with that one. He might know what it is. But I can see a Tommy gun and an SMLE rifle, along with some jerry cans and, a, and the old... Um, 44 gallon drum. This is the very proud members of the armament team there sitting in their captured Kubelwagen. 
and they've painted a like an Australian national flag on the uh, side door there. And you can see here, uh, it's it's like a sand colour with like the green overspray. I know that there's a decal manufacturer uh, here in Australia has made um, made decals for this in 72nd and 48 and maybe 35th scale, but there are around. And um, they've obviously used these these photos from the memorial. I don't know if they would have had um, access to the high resolution images unless they purchased them, but these ones are the high resolution ones here. So it gives you good detail. And you can see how the, um, the Union Jack is a bit different colour to the rest of the flag. Uh, another cool wagon captured, uh, this time used by a Blenheim uh, unit in, in North Africa. And this one here has got a two-part scheme, obviously. And it's um, got some interesting attachments on the outside of the vehicle. And, of course, they've applied mud and that to the, um, to the windscreen to help cut down the glare um, so it wouldn't be so obvious to to our Desert Air Force aircraft. And ironically, it's in the hands of the um, Desert Air Force now, and you can see the inside of the door of the vehicle is still in its original, probably German grey. Uh, that's why it hasn't been painted with the over with the overpaint of uh, a sand sort of yellow colour there. That's like the Kugelwagen, which we have on display at the memorial. Um, this next image is a Jeep. Uh, Jeep images are very popular with the RWF um, in the memorial's collection. Um, this one here is again in Tunisia, for Lieutenant Ted T. Me Up Tunbridge. I guess he was a golfer uh, in a Air Force Jeep acquired by Three Squadron. Uh, and you can see here uh, on the side of the hood, RAAF and stencil with little dots between each of the letters. Uh, apart from that, there's a piece of an overall sort of sand finish with the probably black um, stencil on the front and two spare tyres I can see on the back uh, of the vehicle, not just one, which is what it typically has. This is back to the Pacific, and it's a double Dura in New Guinea. On the 1st of January, 1943, Corporal John Griffiths, seated in the Jeep of number four squadron, Wirraway, um, and others trying to salvage a Wirraway, I should say Wirraway, I should get that fixed, uh, on the airstrip. The other four men are Americans who, uh, who, who are passing by and stopped to help. Uh, notice on the side of the uh, Jeep the RAF is using, it's got a first Australian core stencil, which is a bulldog, standing over a boomerang so that's actually an army um an army emblem but uh i guess if you did to tow this thing around you get whatever you can get uh but the raffis here are using it with a bunch of americans you can see they wear their dungarees on and their um and their hats they, they do look a bit different the uh two raffis with their with their with their khaki fur felt uh, chats on this one I've added because 18 Squadron um, Royal Australian Air Force slash Dutch East Indies uh, was technically a Aussie unit um, with heavy Dutch influence, of course, and they were and they were raised here in Canberra. So I needed to add them. Plus, I met Gus Winkle, the man in this photo, many years ago. Personnel and air crew of 18 Squadron Netherlands East Indies Air Force RAF in front of their in front of their B25 Mitchell aircraft number N5131 named Polk after returning from a raid against the Japanese. Uh, legend pilot Gus Winkle, born 1912, died 2013, 101 years old. Uh, smiling, is second on the left there with, with the pith helmet and the thing in his pocket. And uh, on this one, I've added because it's got a Jeep and on the front there you can see RNF 94 on the front bumper. And I thought that was a pretty interesting variation of an Australian Dutch Jeep being used in the direct defense of Australia. Um, in a very important period of the war in early 43, when you've got um, 18 Squadron doing a lot of work with two Squadron Royal Australian Air Force in and around the Northwest area. This one's probably my favourite image of the ones in my thing today. Um, it's at Falconara in Italy in November 1944. Flight Sergeant Bevan Wallace of Mossman, a pilot of 454 Squadron Royal Australian Air Force, speaks to other members of the squadron. This one here has got a whole bunch of things. I like Baltimore bombers, they're really cool. Uh, and you've also got nose art on the side of the aircraft. You've got uh, on the actual vehicle here, on the um, vehicle C Australia, written proudly across the top of the roof. You'll also see a allied star, white star with a circle on the bonnet. On the front of the bonnet, it has RA and I imagine AF on the other side as well. There's a gas patch on the front right, um, 
wheel bay there, the circular looking thing I imagine will be a gas patch, which would change colour in the event of a of a big contaminated with like with like mustard gas, for example. And it looks like there is a uh, there's a vehicle registration number on the on the on the bumper, but it's a bit obscured by mud and dust and other stuff there in Italy in, in late 1944 when I imagine the weather's getting a bit cold. The Raffi sitting on the uh, vehicle has got his Wellington boots on as well, I can see. And on the door, uh, there appears to be like a white square. So this 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 vehicle's got some cool, um, markings on it, in addition to a really rare Australian used aircraft, the Baltimore, um, or 454 Squadron. And um, yeah, just a cool image. So this, this is my favourite one. The next one uh, is in Tunisia in May 1943, and it shows a group of ground crew members of number one air ambulance unit, Royal Australian Air Force, in a RAF vehicle, which appears to be a captured Italian one, or French, being Tunisia. Um, this is what I'm, I'm happy to hear from someone who found out what this vehicle is. We can always add it to the caption. Um, beside, their vehicle, beside one of their own de Havilland DH-86 aircraft. This uh, image is one of a few taken on that day, in this series, and you'll see the Raffis um, at various points in and around this aircraft with that uh, vehicle parked up nice and close to the door. But that's all in that bracket of um, numbers. If you look up the MEC 006, uh, 68 and 67 and 66, just that bracket, you'll see that other image. This one here is again in Tunisia. You notice there's quite a few images in Tunisia of this, I've, I've added. Um, a mock coat of arms devised by 450 Squadron on the door of a motor vehicle. Uh, it features the infamous Snifter cartoon dog during his traditional pissing on things, in this case the Nazis and fascist Italians. Snifter was a very popular nose art motif on Royal Australian Aircraft, Australian Air Force aircraft, in all theatres of the Second World War. And you'll see as well underneath Snifter, as smiling as he walks away, you'll see the letters O and K intertwined, and OK is the is the squadron case of 450 squadron uh thank you so much um for your time tonight it's really appreciated i'd like to thank um thank the act scale modeling society um like our committee for this opportunity to have a talk to you tonight um and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed some of the images which i've put up i've i tried to put in a mixture of um home and away team the Aussies in the, in the, like the Royal Australian Air Force in World War II who fought overseas and those that fought in and around Australia during the war. Um, happy 100th birthday to the, to the Royal Australian Air Force as well. And um, are there any uh, questions? I can, I can ask you tonight. Hey, Garth, Phil Hasey. Um, yeah, mate. mate, I was uh, in the States a few years ago visiting my brother-in-law we went to the military aircraft museum in virginia and uh when I, they have some ground gear in there and they had a um ammunition trolley for a uh i think it was a 25 pounder and i think and i think the 25 pounder i've got the photos i can't remember now but they were both I'm pretty sure they're both marked, at least the ammunition trolley was, with Australian unit markings as well. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, you know, things like that just turn up. And it's, um, it, it's you know, I, I, they're interesting, some of the stuff they you are. can see. Yeah, um, you get all types of things spread out all around the world after these major conflicts and Australian stuff got spread, obviously, heaps, heaps in the States and like the Britain and so forth. And the problem is like a lot of this stuff was still useful after the war. Those boxes could be used to carry anything. So you'll often find that all that sort of ephemeral stuff, which isn't supposed to last long, didn't last long either during the war or right after the war when like civilian, um, civilian community just uses these former former allied boxes and equipment and just use it for their own personal thing and as chicken feeders or whatever you want to use it for so yeah i'm glad you got to spot it mate if you've got any photos of it can you can you send me the photos or do i look at it good are there any other questions if not you can always email me or or bring it up in the acts scar modeling forum and that 
think Phil might have um, bounced. Yep. Well, oh, thank, yeah, yeah, and thank um, you again, everyone. Aaron, oh, sorry, Garth. Aaron, Aaron Kirk was just asked a question. Um, is there any photographic yep. evidence of the Royal Australian Air Force uh, using Japanese captured vehicles in the Pacific? Yes. Uh, the images I've only used in this presentation were high resolution. Right. On our website, there yep. are images in low res, yep. uh, which I then um, looked up on our on our curatorial database, and that's how. Uh, and then I then discovered that they are all still low res. They were like um, scanned in the nineteen nineties or something. So um, most of these images you see here have been scanned or rescanned in the last ten years. So they're actually good quality. But um, for example, um, Hux aircraft type starters, you know, the ones which have a projecting pole into the into the in, into the uh, into the spinner of yep. the aircraft. Um, the the Japanese Navy did not use those at all. The Japanese Army did, and there's there's a photo of um, in the database of RAF members sitting around and hanging out on a Japanese um, Hux starter truck, which I know you can get. Um, Kits for in 48 and 70 second scale by Hazard Gower. Um, yeah. uh, but they're all Japanese army ones. But there are photos, yeah. Um, so to answer Aaron's question, yeah, there are photos, but they're in low resolution. And I didn't want to put up um, low quality images on this because it's hard enough to look at them as it is. But it's, it's far better to look at these, obviously, in high res. But yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. it looks like in these photos, Aussies were using, the Raffis were using, captured German, captured Italian, and also Japanese. Um, vehicles, but the problem is, is with Japanese vehicles in the Pacific, most have been machine gunned, paraphragged, high explosives have been applied liberally by the 5th Air Force and by the Royal Australian Air Force. So by the time the Aussies get to said island, um, any infrastructure and vehicles and aircraft are pretty much um, unusable. Whereas it seems to be, you see like those cool wagon images um, and so forth. Um, they're cool vehicles, um, and of course they're like a Luger on, on wheels, so they're very collectible during the war, and as a as a, as a status thing, and they're actually quite good vehicles in the in the sand because they've got a flat bottom, so you can slide it through and over mud, dirt, dust, and stuff. But the photos clearly show operable Kubel wagons, and that shows you that um, during the during during the North African uh, uh, light campaign, so it's such, it's such a swift change of fortunes that you could have intact airfields virtually captured by the Germans or by the Axis, uh, by the uh, Allies, but leaving behind operable aircraft and vehicles. So that's how come you can see there um, a few four or five images I had there of, of Kubelwagens in North Africa. Yeah, cool. I think, um, yeah, Phil Hasty's back now. So um, I think you dropped out, Phil. Garth was just asking if um, you had some photos of um, what you were talking about in America, if you could um, get them to Garth, he's interested in having a look. The battery went flat, so I had to go and get the power pack. Fair enough. Yeah. No worries, mate. And thanks for your question too, mate. And, and also thank yeah, you. I'll get, I'll get the photos to you, Garth. Thanks, mate. Yeah, the um, the, it was it was interesting. You know, the, this place has just got so much shit in it. It's just unbelievable. And um, it, it's, you know, like you can go in there and you can eat your lunch off the floor and they got a whole range of uniforms and stuff and this is a guy who gets a lot of his aircraft rebuilt in uh, New Zealand and uh, so yeah it's he's uh, I'll, I'll get get the photos to you and you can have a look at them thanks mate excellent any any other questions no questions, just a general comment. A really good um, presentation there, Garth. There was stuff there I didn't realise that the RAF operated, those GMC trucks in particular, and uh, the markings. Yeah. I might have to go and hunt a few models down now. <laughs> Bastard. Well, that's, that's the idea, mate. Yeah, like this is to inspire some of our blokes to go, you know, make something different, and it would get attention um, at a model show, I guess, if you or, or amongst your friends and family if you had what you typically think of as American operated, you know, deuce and a half trucks when they've clearly got Royal Australian Air Force stuff on them, they've got kangaroos, they've got Aussie things. So I think it's cool. Yeah, no, no, right. Thanks. 
How's a gower, Ray? Yes, thanks. <laughs> it has a gower dorm, yeah. And uh, to me, it does the the CCKW trucks. I think in um in thirty five, yeah. yeah. I think there's yeah. forty eight scale yeah. ones as well. Mm. It, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. Has a gower do them in seventy second scale. Yeah, yeah, I've got uh, some of the tankers, but uh, not the general um, GMC, the, the cargo trucks. Yeah. And oh. on our on our work database, you'll see, if you put in RAF Airfield Construction. What, what those guys did during the war was, was amazing and they had so much different kit and it was the one RAAF thing which, like MacArthur, needed um, in his invasion of the Philippines. Um, he didn't have US Navy CBs. He had Royal Australian Air Force airfield construction and um, them and the bow fighters went forward, of course, into the um, Philippines and we've got a lot of good photos of British Australian trucks in RAF airfield construction squadrons along with tippers dumpers graders all types of raffi used vehicles so um this this of course just helps show a different side to the air force's history this year and and that and that's why i come I'm, I'm happy to help out and if you need any images like this just let me know ray and i can help you with those great thanks no worries man hey garth it's jado here mate hey jado good to see you mate just want to um, apologise that I missed your um, gig tonight, mate. I just had a full-on day and I was finally <laughs> able to get on. But, um, That's all good, mate. Yeah. yeah it's, it was recorded, so you can catch it later on, mate. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely yeah it's just about that. Rafi stuff and aircraft, uh, vehicles and stuff during, the, during World yeah, War II. I saw that's what it was about and I sort of caught the end of it. No, oh, bugger. Right. Yeah, sorry, mate. Quite, quite yeah. interesting. Oh, don't be sorry, mate. Don't be sorry <laughs> at all. Because that, that's on yeah. me. I'll, I missed it. Pete, Pete prompted me, but I was just caught out. <laughs> good. Well, it's good to see this has got the clear sponsorship of your mob spec mod too. It's good. No, nah, no worries. Pretty good. Excellent. Pete, those Instagrams coming, mate. Loving them. <laughs> <laughs> Try to. <laughs> oh, you're smashing them out. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anyone? Um, yeah. Any, any other questions? Um, yeah, I guess, Garth, just formally, um, on behalf of the committee, um, just thanks for your time tonight. Um, it's recorded. I'm sure the people that weren't able to get on will have a chance to watch a recording later um, and yep. get some benefit. No worries, You're welcome. Um, yeah, so just, yeah, greatly appreciate it for your time and stuff tonight um, in putting that presentation together for us. Thanks. Yep. Thank no, you very, very much. I'm just happy to help out the association and, yeah. and, and give like a thank you. Yeah. Thanks, boss. Appreciate it. No worries. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Cheers. Stuff. Thanks, boss. Yep, I'll turn it off now.